Taylor Parnell here. Welcome back to our channel and welcome if you're new here. Today's video is going to be the top seven mistakes every dog owner should avoid when using an e-collar. So if you're excited for today's video like usual, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. It really does support our channel. Also subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so that you never miss a video with us. What's super important is we want to reach as many dog owners as we can to help them better communicate with our dogs. So if you give this video a big thumbs up and share it, let's go ahead and get into today's video. So avoiding these top seven mistakes is gonna give you and your dog a very healthy and positive experience using an e-collar. So let's go ahead and get into those different tips. Tip number one, avoid using the e-collar as punishment. This can create fear, anxiety, and a negative association with your collar. So what I want you guys instead to do is use it as a way to effectively enforce those commands you know when you're training with your dog what's super important is you want them to understand that this is a positive thing and it's just helping you reinforce those commands so remember make sure you give them a lot of praise and extra positive encouragement when using your e-collar number two avoid using high intensity shocks what's super important is we're not using this to inflict pain on your dog or make them uncomfortable reinforce a command or help correct those unwanted behaviors so i want you guys to remember you should always be starting on the low level the dog should be paying attention to the vibration the shock the beep of whatever you're using if your dog isn't, I want you to gradually increase that method because sometimes we need to make sure that our dogs completely understand that command. So make sure you guys are avoiding those high intensity shocks. Number three, avoid using the e-collar for extended periods of time. What's super important is that we're using this collar throughout the day when they're playing, sleeping, training. Remember, you wanna always make sure when you're with your dog is to check underneath the skin and make sure that there's no chafing, there's no redness, everything is looking good. And what's super important is I don't want your collar on when you're not with your dog because you want your dog to be under the protection of you in case something does happen. So it's super important to make sure that you don't leave your e-collar for extended periods of time and that you're always with your dog when they're wearing it. Remember, your dog should only be wearing the e-collar from six to eight hours a day. Number four, avoid using the e-collar without professional guidance. We recommend that you take advice from a professional trainer or a behaviorist when you start to use this on your dog. Take advice from them and not from you because we wanna make sure that your dog has that well-being and safety when using this tool. Number five, avoid using e-collars on puppies. E-collars on puppies is not gonna work good for you because puppies are very sensitive in these moments. They're very sensitive to higher levels of different kind of um, you know, sensations. They're very gentle in these moments. So we want you guys to avoid using an e-collar on puppies simply because they're just not ready for it yet. With Envirox, we make sure that you guys are using your e-collars from eight months to even a year because you need to establish those ground basics with your dog before using your e-collar. Avoid relying solely on the e-collar for training. The e-collar should be used as an aid, not something that's gonna completely change and take over all your training time. What's super important is all training should be with positive reinforcement. That's praise, treats, toys. You guys have to remember that this is an aid. It's something that's gonna help reinforce, but all those basic ground commands that you guys use, that's gonna be something that's developed by you. So make sure that you have a big reminder that this is an aid and you don't want to rely solely on the e-collar. Having positive training techniques can not only help your dog learn faster, but it will create a stronger bond for you and your dog. Avoid using the e-collar to address behavioral issues without finding the root cause. Don't rely on an e-collar to suppress your dog's behavioral issues. It's super important to consult with a professional and to figure out what that underlying cause is. Remember, an e-collar is a great way to enforce something and to remind the dog of what you're asking for them. But when you guys are using something to suppress behavioral issues, this is an underlying cause and this won't solve the problem. So I want you guys to remember, make sure you reach out to a professional and of course, use this as a way to enforce those training aids. 
E-collar can be an effective tool, but it's not gonna cure all the solutions. So what's super important is to make sure that you guys are reminded of what that underlying issue and to correct that using you know an extensive plan with your trainer. Because remember, if you use it with the e-collar, the underlying issue might reoccur often. So make sure you seek professional help. In conclusion, using an e-collar can be an effective tool, but these are the top seven mistakes to avoid when using an e-collar. We wanna make sure that you have an incredible experience with your dog and give him a healthy, well-being life. So make sure you follow these top seven tips and we'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like this video, subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss our next video and comment below what you wanna see next. Thanks for your time. We'll see you on the next one.